Good evening. Welcome to the public hearing for the I-75 improvements pd &E study from State Road 200 to State Road 326. My name is David Graber and I'm the project manager with the Florida Department of Transportation. We thank you for joining us today. During the hearing, we will present information on the department's plans to improve safety and enhance operations along this segment of I-75. This hearing is being held to give you the opportunity to provide feedback on this project. We want to hear from you, and there are multiple ways that you can submit your questions and comments. All questions and comments will become part of the public hearing record. We will now begin the presentation. Information is being provided in multiple ways to allow the community to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted in person on Monday, March 4th, 2024, and virtually through GoToWebinar on Wednesday, March 6th, 2024. The presentation is also available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452074-1. This public hearing was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720-6834 by phone at 386-943-5077 or by email at melissa.mckinney, that's M-E-L-I-S-S-A dot M-C-K-I-N-N-E-Y at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Suwannee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or by email at stefan.kulikowski, that's S-T-E-F-A-N dot K-U-L-A-K-O-W-S-K-I, at dot.state.fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the hearing notifications. The public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register, on FDOT's Public Notices website, the project webpage, and in the local newspaper. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, Elected and appointed officials and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. Hearing information was also shared on social media. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 U.S.C. 327 and a Memorandum of Understanding dated May 26, 2022 and executed by the Federal Highway Administration and FDOT. Project documents are available for viewing at the Ocala Public Library, 2720 East Silver Spring Boulevard, Ocala, Florida, 34470. Hours are 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and from 1 p.m. till 5 p.m. on Sunday. The project documents are also available on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 452074-1. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. 
There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts, both beneficial and adverse, and proposed methods to mitigate adverse project impacts. And third, a formal comment period following this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone, or you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. FDOT recently prepared an interstate master plan for I-75 to address the corridor's existing and future transportation needs. The limits of the master plan extend along I-75 from Florida's Turnpike in Sumter County to Marion County Alachua County line and include the associated interchanges. The master plan identified near-term improvements referred to as Phase 1, subsequent interchange improvements referred to as Phase 2, and long-term improvements referred to as Phase 3. The master plan also includes an implementation plan, which provides a roadmap for how the improvements can be implemented over three time horizons or phases, as funding and priorities allow. The proposed improvements that will be presented at tonight's public hearing are the master plan recommended phase one near-term improvements. These improvements are anticipated to provide benefits to the roadway users for the next 15 to 20 years. The master plan recommended phase two and phase three long-term improvements will continue to be evaluated in future studies. The recommended master plan near-term improvements advanced to a series of project development and environment or PD&E studies. The near-term I-75 improvements are currently being evaluated under two separate PD&E studies. I-75 South begins south of State Road 44 and ends at State Road 200. I-75 North begins at State Road 200 and ends at State Road 326. This public hearing and presentation are for the I-75 improvements PD&E study from State Road 200 to State Road 326, Financial Project Identification FPID number 452074-1, Efficient Transportation Decision-Making Number 14542. Environmental analysis is ongoing for I-75 from south of State Road 44 to State Road 200, and a separate public hearing will be scheduled at a later time. The project is consistent with the Ocala Marion Transportation Planning Organization 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan and the Transportation Improvement Plan. The project is also in FDOT's current work program. The PD&Es are the second step of a state-required project development process used to evaluate the potential social, natural, and physical impacts associated with a planned transportation improvement project. The objective of the PD&E studies is to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, and is used to support decisions concerning if, where, and what improvements should be built to address transportation needs. FDOT was able to advance the design for this project, which is currently underway. Looking ahead, the right-of-way and construction phase are also funded. The need for improvements on I-75 has been well documented over the years through various studies and initiatives. Improvements are needed in the near term to address travel delays resulting from traffic incidents and seasonal traffic, and in the long term to address congestion resulting from growth in population, visitor traffic, and freight activity. Improvements are needed in the near term to reduce the frequency and severity of incidents on I-75. Today, I-75 experiences a total closure once every nine days, and at least one lane is closed every 13 hours for an average period of three hours due to crashes. Many of the crashes are caused by vehicles slowing or braking at entry and exit points to I-75, resulting in rear-end collisions. In addition, a high number of incidents are also caused by sudden weaving or merging maneuvers, resulting in sideswipes. 
Improvements in the near term are also needed to address reliability opportunities related to seasonal traffic, special events, and weather. Unlike other similar interstate facilities, I-75 often experiences heavy congestion on the weekends and can experience major delays around spring break, summer holidays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Traffic during these times can be almost double that of a typical day. Improvements in the long term will also be needed to improve capacity and address growth in population, visitor traffic, and freight activity. By 2050, Florida's population is projected to increase by an additional 23%, adding over 500 people per day. Marion County's population is expected to grow by 24%, and Sumter County is expected to increase by an additional 52%. Florida's continued growth in the tourism industry will continue to be a contributing factor to traffic in the area. The state saw 122 million visitors in 2021, and over half of these visitors arrived by automobile. Roughly 15% of all Florida visitors traveling by automobile use I-75 to reach their destination. I-75 is also a critical route for the movement of freight, with at least 20% of all trips made by trucks. As the region surrounding the I-75 corridor continues to grow, the demand for goods will rise, which will contribute to a higher number of trucks using I-75 and connecting roadways. To address the transportation needs, FDOT evaluated the Phase 1 recommended build alternative from the I-75 Interstate Master Plan and the no-build alternative. The no-build assumes no improvements are made and does not meet the purpose and need for the project. However, it does provide a baseline condition against which to compare and measure the effects of the build alternatives. The build alternative would involve constructing auxiliary lanes between interchanges along I-75. The lane would be added to the outside of the existing travel lanes, yet still within the existing I-75 right-of-way, and would require the reconstruction of the outside shoulder. An auxiliary lane is an extra lane connecting the on and off ramps between two consecutive interchanges. The additional lane allows drivers wanting to merge onto the interstate a longer distance to do so and helps reduce bottlenecks caused by drivers attempting to enter or exit the interstate. Auxiliary lanes decrease conflicts, improve safety, and ultimately allow the existing lanes to work more efficiently. The build alternative will require several bridge overpasses to either be widened or replaced to accommodate the auxiliary lanes and widening of I-75. Overpass bridge widening will occur at Southwest 20th Street, and overpass bridge replacement will occur at Northwest 63rd Street. For the build alternative, stormwater ponds will be needed to protect surrounding areas from flooding and to keep pollutants out of the area's natural waterways. Stormwater ponds collect the rain that runs off pavements and other impervious areas to prevent flooding. Later, after pollutants are filtered out, the water is slowly released. FDOT decides where to build new stormwater ponds by studying nearby locations, taking into account elevations, soil type, the existing water table, and what body of water will get the runoff. Engineers also analyze impacts to wetlands and endangered species, cultural resources, potential for contamination, and potential impacts on nearby utilities. For this PD&E study, Multiple stormwater pond site alternatives were evaluated and presented at the public information meetings in December 2023. The preferred stormwater pond sites are documented in the study's pond siting report and available for review at tonight's public hearing. Construction of the auxiliary lanes for the build alternative will be within the existing I-75 right-of-way. However, additional land near the interstate will be needed to construct ponds to hold the additional stormwater that drains from the wider roadway. Currently, 10 pond sites are proposed, totaling approximately 192 acres. Pond sites will continue to be evaluated as the project moves into the design phase. An important element of this PD&E study was to evaluate the potential project impacts and benefits. 
A wide range of environmental resources were evaluated, including various social, cultural, natural, and physical features. The table compares the potential impacts associated with the no-build and build alternative for the environmental considerations. Overall, 25 vacant parcels will be needed to accommodate stormwater ponds. The build alternative will involve seven residential relocations and four business relocations. Archaeological and historic sites are present in the vicinity of the I-75 corridor, but the project will not impact any sites eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. The build alternative and pond sites would result in 0.3 acres of wetland impacts. The estimated impact to floodplains is 2.42 acres. 32 listed species and one candidate species have the potential to occur within the project area. However, the likelihood of the project's potential impact to these species is low. 19 potentially contaminated sites adjacent to the project have a medium to high likelihood of being affected by the build alternative. There are 361 impacted noise-sensitive sites adjacent to the project, including residences and businesses. Implementation of the build alternative will likely result in relocations to some of the existing utilities. Additional information regarding potential relocations and noise impacts is provided on the following slides. The roadway improvements are within existing right-of-way. However, additional right-of-way will be needed for stormwater management ponds. One of the unavoidable consequences on a project such as this is the necessary relocation of families or businesses. On this project, we anticipate the relocation of seven families and four businesses. All right-of-way acquisition will be conducted in accordance with Florida Statutes 339.09 and 421.55 and the Federal Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Policies Act of 1970, commonly known as the Uniform Act. If you are required to make any type of move as a result of a Department of Transportation project, you can expect to be treated in a fair and helpful manner and in compliance with the Uniform Relocation Assistance Act. If a move is required, you will be contacted by an appraiser who will inspect your property. We encourage you to be present during the inspection and provide information about the value of your property. You may also be eligible for relocation advisory services and payment benefits. If you are being moved and you are unsatisfied with the department's determination of your eligibility for payment or the amount of that payment, you may appeal that determination. You will be promptly furnished necessary forms and notified of the procedures to be followed in making that appeal. A special word of caution, if you move before you receive notification of the relocation benefits that you might be entitled to, your benefits may be jeopardized. The relocation specialists at the in-person hearing will be happy to answer your questions and will also furnish you with copies of relocation assistance brochures. For those attending virtually, you may reach out to the FDOT project manager who will direct your request to the appropriate relocation specialists. Traffic noise impacts were evaluated for 361 impacted noise sensitive sites along the corridor, representing 427 residences. Noise abatement measures in the form of noise barriers were considered at all impacted locations. Noise barrier systems were found to be potentially feasible and reasonable per FDOT guidelines for three noise-sensitive areas. The construction of potentially feasible and reasonable barriers will be further evaluated during the design phase. The total estimated cost for the preferred alternative is approximately $172.1 million and includes the cost for construction, right-of-way, utilities, design, and construction engineering and inspection. All future phases are currently funded, including construction, which is scheduled to begin in spring 2025. The project is being funded by Governor DeSantis' Moving Florida Forward Infrastructure Initiative. 
The No Build and Build Alternative were presented to the public at a series of public information meetings in December 2023. In addition, other various opportunities to provide public input have been offered. Based on the public input received and the results of the PD&E study analysis, the Build Alternative has been identified as the preferred alternative. The build alternative meets the purpose and need and is anticipated to accommodate travel demand, enhance freight and intermodal relationships by reducing travel times when compared to the no build, and has the potential to improve safety by reducing the number of incidents along the corridor. The PD&E and design phases of project development are occurring concurrently for the auxiliary lanes. With the help of the governor's Moving Florida Forward initiative, a historic investment in our state's infrastructure, FDOT is expected to start construction of the I-75 improvements in spring 2025. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public hearing record, and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by March 16, 2024 will become part of the project's public hearing record. All questions will be responded to in writing following the hearing. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with the project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public hearing record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. You may also provide your comment directly to the court reporter. You may also contact FDOT Project Manager David Graber directly by email at david.graber, that's D-A-V-I-D dot G-R-A-E-B-E-R -E -E at D-O-T dot state dot F-L dot U-S or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5392 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public hearing notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about the project, go to www.cflroads.com, type the project number 452074-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public hearing materials are posted on the website now. The next step is to incorporate your input on this public hearing into our decision-making process. After the comment period closes and your input has been considered, a decision will be made and the final PD&E document will be approved. This project has and will continue to comply with all applicable state and federal rules and regulations. This concludes the presentation.